Want to be heard on the non-stop radio show? Send us your submissions in MP3 format at Let's Network Musically 212 at gmail.com. This is Non-Stop Radio. Uplifting my verses should be in scripture. Our women need natural healing. I'm here to give you the picture. Reflecting on all these lines will make you look in the mirror. I know your power been stripped, so here's your vision. We let the ladies, I know your divine essence. Without your culture itself, I know you gon' need direction. Watch for the music, be careful what you injecting. We know the children is watching, so what you rapping? Ladies and gentlemen, what's really good? Welcome back to the show. Once again, it's your boy Emilio Whiteball. And I want to say thank you to each of you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join me here once again. And tonight we got a real treat in store for you, ladies and gentlemen. Me and our next guest goes way back. For those of y'all out there who can recall the earlier days of the nonstop radio show, we go back as far as 2017 when I was invited to join his illustrious network. And ladies and gentlemen, if y'all heard the name Network, y'all already know what I'm talking about. Got my man DJ Kawan here rocking out with us once again. And also, man, a newcomer to the platform as well that's going to be joining us here tonight. We also got Rod King in the building as well. Fellas, I definitely want to say thank you for taking the time out and welcome to the show. How's everything? Hey, what's good, my brother? Always a pleasure to be on the platform. My Absolutely. And Rod, thank you, man. I know this is your first time here, so you know you you What's getting up? introduced into the platform and all that good stuff, man. So I welcome you both, gentlemen, for you know joining the show and all that good stuff, man. I truly appreciate it. No, no doubt, no doubt. So with that being said, you know everybody out there, we all know who DJ Kawan is. With you, Rod, we're gonna give you the opportunity to introduce yourself to the uh, audience and get them. The opportunity to you know get to know a little bit about you man so if you were brother the floor is all yours absolutely so i go by the name of rock king that's my artist name out of milwaukee wisconsin you know i recently linked, linked up with dj kawan we dropped our first project out called the healing tape and uh you know me and kawan came together and we've been doing like a series of of projects pretty much man and uh you know i represent hip-hop you know the underground and uh We've been doing some real dope things, man. So like, we just been building, we pushing hip hop in a, uh, you know, a positive, a positive mindset and pushing the culture because uh, we, we need, we need real good hip hop out here. So we just came to get man, like minded individuals and we've been pushing the culture. But yeah, that's that's about me though. Absolutely. And DJ Kawan, you know, you've been at this thing for quite some time now. You know, DJ. You know, got your own platform, your own network, the Kawan J Media Digital Broadcast Network. And now here you are, you know, you're getting into producing. You put out a few projects. You got the heat tape that's out there right now. The healing tape is here. So how does it feel, man, going through all these different transitions? And what made you focus more so on produ uh, producing now more so than DJing? Oh, man. Um, good question, bro. So, you know, on the personal side, you know, I was dealing with a lot of loss here with family with my pops and my uncle and my great grandma, my granddad here in the past well, a year and a half, two years, right? Mm -hmm. So um, kind of dealing with that, um, I, I kind of fell back a little bit on the radio side just because it was just hard for me to kind of focus on, um, you know, DJing and, and wanting to interview people when I had a lot going on in my mind. And just, um, it just I just wasn't there. My head wasn't there for, for that. So, um my uncle passed away, Uncle Frankie, rest in peace, man. He He's the one who kind of was always in the music creation space mm -hmm. when I was growing up. So he, he created, he wrote music, he, he wrote, uh, he played every instrument under the sun. And then when hip hop started really taking off, he, you know, he got the NPC, you know, during the riots and stuff like that back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, he got his first NPC and started kind of, um, you know, I would just kind of go over scripts sometimes, just kind of watch him play on that machine, man. And just, it was just an, amazed by the sounds he was creating out of that thing. And then Uncle Frankie has always been the homebody. Um, so he always had all the all the latest equipment and and and, and, and equipment and, and machines and stuff. So when he recently passed, we um, you know went to the funeral up there in New York and then kind of went to his apartment to kind of help clean it out. And then um, I found some of his old old machines and stuff. And my cousin was like, you know, I know you do the music stuff, so take this NPC. 
uh, Uncle Frankie was, you know, he would, he probably wants you to have it more than me because I don't do music. So, um, you know, turned the machine on, man, and found a bunch of beats that he probably that he was working on that he never finished. And he always taught me structures and how to, you know, do it, how to count measures and, and stuff like that. And as a kid, it didn't really click um, and stuff like that, but I kind of understood it. But after kind of seeing what he was working on that he never released, it kind of lit something under me where, you know, we, we're not here for too long, brother. We're just here in the blink of an eye in mm-hmm. an overall picture. So you kind of got to, whatever you got in you that God gave you, man, you got to get it out either way any way you can so that, that kind of jolted me to kind of start playing with his NPC a little bit and literally I felt his energy and just everything that he was telling me from a kid started clicking on me man and um started getting into the beats and everything and then and, and I was just kind of posting some videos on social media just some beats not really saying I did the beat or anything like that just kind of making some little promo videos with some beats and then that's when uh, my brother Lendo hit me up and um, he was like, yo, what, do you, what beat is that? And I told him, oh, I'm just playing around on this. And he was like, let me do something with that. So that became Hip Hop Mission. And that was literally like the first, uh, oh, I can do this. I can, I can create, you know what I'm saying, again and start doing some stuff. So that, that's kind of what started the heat tape. And then which led to Beacon in the Dark with me and Lindor. And now me and my brother, uh, Ra, Ra, Nu, Ra King doing projects. And it's like, um, you know, just a new found energy, man. To, to, to get into the producing and the beat making again um, and it kind of take it just, I just love the creativity side of it you know what I'm saying because the DJ thing is kind of autopilot for me now like mm-hmm. I can play records I can play records and pick out records without even really listening to them now because I you know you know you, when you hear certain tempos you know what the key in on but when you're mm-hmm. creating music it's a little bit different so um, it's just the thing that got my energy right now that I'm really really engulfed in and, and, and loving it right now mm-hmm absolutely man and i can i can i can vouch for that first i want to say you know my condolences once again to you because i know you've been dealing with a lot of different losses in your family and all that stuff so i definitely want to extend my condolences to you and your family first and foremost but you know i can no doubt man and i can also you know really agree with you and i can also vouch for what you're saying man like when it comes to producing because even myself here lately you know like i know you know you know my background i started off mostly as an artist first before transitioning into being you know an on-air personality and you know dabbling around a little bit here and there with the production myself and here lately i've been finding myself more intrigued and more wanting to know how to produce and you know take care of these own things myself and learning production and actually sitting down and creating music is very therapeutic especially in a time right now where we got so much things going on you know you got so many stressful situations just that therapeutic feeling just sitting down whatever your weapon of choice is whether it be the machine or mpc or a keyboard or whatever you know just that mm-hmm. that therapeutic feeling of just sitting down and just tapping out a beat and just getting lost in the the creation process of making music so i definitely can vouch for you on that one absolutely man you know man you're a writer you know what I'm saying i heard you i heard you and rock he, he's a he is a ill mc man don't let him fool you he's a, he's a dope writer and um you know i think i think when you when you're a a, a top tier one thing that you do i think when you touch the other aspects of it too it, it comes to you a little bit easier too because you kind of already understand the structure mm-hmm. it's just more of learning a workflow you know what i'm saying so i think I think you're going to definitely do really well on the production side just because you understand the, once you get your workflow down, man, you're going to be you going to be writing your music and writing your song at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I appreciate <laughs> that, man. And I can definitely hear it in you, man. Like, I'm like, yo... It, this hadn't been something that you had just started doing like because the way like i listen to your beats and i listen to the music that you've been putting together here lately and doing the collabs with various artists including Ra. Mm-hmm. i can just hear it man that it's been something that's been within you for a very long time and now you're just showing that expressive and creative side to the world and everybody's starting to take notice man how does that feel it's dope, brother. Um, you know, it, 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 honestly, the, the reason I think I didn't get started earlier is I was intimidated by the, by the software, intimidated by the machines. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I let social media and I kind of got caught up in, if you ain't got this, you ain't got this, and you know, you know, you know, you're not a producer or, you know, yeah. everything. If you don't have this, you don't have this, you're not a real DJ because you don't have turn that, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I've always been intimidated by that studio feel just because there's so much going on in the studio it's, it's, it's disorienting so 
with me kind of getting my uncle's machine and kind of seeing his workflow and digging in that and messing with that thing for so long, man, it was I, it, cl- it just clicked. You know what I'm saying? And that's when I really realized that it don't matter. It don't matter the type of tools you got, just because it's, it's in you. The tool is inside of you. The rest mm-hmm. of it is just an extension of that tool. So you kind of got to just get your get out of that that mindset of the machines and all that kind of stuff. Because I know some people get looked down on for using computers and all that. And I was like, nah, anything that makes it come out, man, you got to use it. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? That's what hip hop is always about. Hip hop is about using the best technology at the time to to get your ideas out. Because back in the '80s, all they had was a uh, a beat machine with that can sample six seconds or something like that. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So you gotta use, you gotta use what's available at that time and then just get it out of you. Absolutely, man. And with so much technology out here these days, man, like, you know, like the creation process is endless for a lot of people. But also when you have so many tools at your access, to me, it kind of like wanes on your your, your creativity because you become overwhelmed with so many things, mm-hmm. you know. So I find people that, you know, can be created through limitations is always the ones that are more intriguing to me. Because I've, I've heard people put together, you know, stuff with the, the least amount of gear or even mm-hmm. without having gear at all. So, like, when it boils down to mm-hmm. it, you're right. It's actually within you, the the creator of this art, to bring it out. And just whatever tool you use is the weapon of choice at that time, you know? Yeah, and I think this project, this, this healing tape project is, a, is an example of that, man. Because me and Rob, uh, we, obviously we don't live in the same city, mm-hmm. but... We, but we have the we have the we have the advantage of we are we're, me and him think on the spot and we get it done on the spot because mm-hmm. he has his at home set up just like me so we don't have to worry about studio time I don't have to worry about you know setting up a whole bunch of gear I can just knock it out real quick send it to him in an email and he'll within two three hours he's sending them those vocals back man so it's, it's definitely we use I think we and Rob probably could agree we were very minimalistic on putting this project together outside of my man John Rajin doing the mix and master. Um, we we were very minimalistic on putting this joint together, and, and to me, it sounds like a, a, a million dollar album. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> <laughs> And now this question is for you, Ra. Like, how was it the first time for you working with DJ Kawan, being that, you know, you guys both live in different cities? Look, first of all, let's get to it. Like, how did you guys come across one another and, you know, started this this venture of working together and, you know, putting together projects and putting out what we have now on the healing tape? How did that all come together? Hey, absolutely. So, it go, uh, it's an artist that go by the name uh, Drums Rugged out of, uh, you know, Dallas, Texas. Okay. And uh, me and him had been for a while, and he was pretty much telling me about Kawan. He was just telling me that his platform dope. He very hip-hop. And uh, I was checking him. I had checked him out a couple times, and uh, I had just finished up, like, a project. And I was just like, you know, I was in a, in a space to where I wanted to put more work out. So uh, I had checked him out. He was like, yo, you need to link up with Kawan. He's doing some real dope things. So me and Kawan ended up linking up, man. And it was pretty much just a beautiful chemistry there. Like, uh, you know, uh, he was sending me beats. Like he said, man, after after he had sent me like a beat, I, I sent it back to him within like two to three hours or so. And we just kept building on, on there. And, you know, I was just in a space to where... I wanted to put out projects. I wanted to put out like bodies of work and he was pretty much just on the same type of time and we was just both hungry and uh, you know, I wanted to put out some dope hip hop music for the culture. So uh, man, we, we actually on our fourth project right now. Mm. So it's, it's been going, it's been going beautiful, man. Just the beautiful chemistry. Uh, Kawan's real easy to work with. Uh, though he started doing, you know, kind of just back hopping back into the producing, he very dope. He's very dope. Like, uh, and I don't work with like a few producers. And uh, man, to me, he's been my like, you know, my personal favorite producer that I don't work with. So, and I, I don't work with a, I don't work with some good heavy hitters. I feel like so it's, it's been dope, man. I, I just say that it's been very dope, a very beautiful experience. That's what's up, man. And that's one of the good things here about, you know, technology nowadays. You know, beforehand, you would have to actually travel to wherever the people was at to, you know, work together. Nowadays, you can just, you know, as we see with the Internet and the reach that we have, we can connect with people all over the world and do, you know, projects and stuff like that. And that's one of the wonderful things I do like 
about this current era of music that we in. We don't even have to be in the same city or even in the same space. All I have to do is just right. put together something, send you the project, and you can just send it back and we can get work done like yeah. that. But do you guys actually miss the feeling of being in the studio with one another and working together or do you prefer it this way actually? Um, for me, I try to keep it um, as organic as possible. Mm -hmm. so, so like, I don't, I don't like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very different on how I think on a lot of things when it comes to this, I guess. I, I think that's why I guess my platforms are different and things that I do kind of work out my way because I don't go with the norm. So like, I don't just sit at the house and make beats and put them in the folder all day. Like, I, you know, I got a nine to five, I got a wife, I got kids. So I don't really have that kind of time. So I'd like the, I like the feeling of me and Rob, how we do is we kind of chop it up. We throw, go with some ideas on what we kind of want the overall sound to be. Mm -hmm. And then I may do two or three beats from scratch to send it to him and say, what do you think? Is this kind of in the ballpark? And he'll be like, yeah, that's it. So once I kind of get that green light, I'll kind of keep that in the back of my mind and I'll start creating and I'll just literally just start knocking out beats up until he's like, okay, we're good on beats. You know, because we'll say, well, how many joints are we going to do for a project? And then I'll go and dip until we get that many and I'll stop. So everything that we do has been from scratch organically. And to me, that's kind of as close as it's going to be for right now as being in the studio with somebody. Um, I also think that with me being, making beats and being the DJ type, I can't tell him how to write to what I do. Mm -hmm. I just kind of create something I was feeling and see if he picked up on what I was feeling and let him expand on that idea and he'll send it back. And it's pretty much for the most part, I'm not going to say, nah, that's not, that's not dope or, or, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm not a writer like that. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I do the beats, I do the sounds. And I think I do things from the DJ aspect. So I definitely um, try to put something together. that's always going to be banging for my DJs. But I, when he gets on the part we're writing, that's all him, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So whatever he's feeling, I want him to do that. And I think that's what keeps us organic so far is the fact that we kind of stay out of our, each other's way <laughs> when it comes to that. Like, mm -hmm. I, he's never, like, said to me, uh, I think it should, you know, flip this and flip that kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? Or I don't think you should use that. I think you should put this in there. Just like I'm not going to tell him, you know, I don't think you should say that or you should say that another way. Like, I want him to be as free as he wants to be to get something out. And then, you know, I may ask him, what was he thinking when you get that? Because I may have to explain that down the road. <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> but so I could be in the same ballpark with him. But right. um, other than that, man, it's all about the freedom. You know, he gives me the freedom to create. And when I send it to him, he loves it. And I, he has the freedom to write to it. And then we'll we'll put it out. You know what I'm saying? See what the world thinks. And we've been, so far, I think we've been, we haven't missed yet, in my opinion. I think everything we put out so far, people like. No. And hey, Rod, do you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, definitely no misses. He's right right there. Definitely no misses. And uh man, it's 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 just been dope though, man. As I was saying, like uh working with him, it's been uh it's been real easy, man, too. Like uh just to give y'all a little insight, we pretty much got uh, you know, two projects done in one year. And uh we already on the uh you know of the, the second the second so we got we got stuff done to 25 already it's just been a real dope experience you know i'm somebody that loves hip-hop so uh this whole experience has been it's, it's been great man absolutely so rod let me ask you you know because when it comes to the midwest you know a lot of people mm -hmm. we know about chicago we know about detroit but a lot of people don't necessarily say much about Milwaukee when it comes to right. the music scene, especially hip hop. So like when it comes to, uh, to to Wisconsin overall, when it comes to Milwaukee, how would you say the sound is like out there in the Midwest for you guys? Oh, wow. That's a great question. Uh, I would say uh, it's, it's, it's all over the place. Like we got some dope hip hop here for sure. We got some dope hip hop, but uh, uh, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with like the Detroit sound like they, mm -hmm. a lot of people call it like the trap. we got a lot of that here too mm -hmm. and then you know oh, it's just professional trap so it's, it's kind of spread out in my sense but uh, it's definitely some talent here you don't hear much about it I kind of feel like uh, and you know it's, it, it'd be dope to uh, you know come together come together more uh, here in Milwaukee because I feel like it's divided but uh you know, with the things that me and DJ Kawan is doing, I feel like I'm going to be able to do some amazing things for the city. So as things continue to grow and uh, 
ele evolve and elevate for me, I'm gonna make sure that I definitely put the city in the right position where, uh, you know, more artists can be known here. Cause it's like, it's like you said, you don't really hear too much here. So, mm -hmm. uh, but I will say this, it is some talent here though. Don't get it twisted. It's some talent, there's definitely some talent in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Absolutely. I agree yeah. with you. And when it boils down to it, you know, that's one of the things also getting back into the technology that I like about this current era that we're in, you know, especially with the emergence of online platforms such as myself, such as DJ Kawan with the mixtape show and various other platforms out there is the fact that we get the opportunity to tap in the markets that you don't hear a lot from the mainstream perspective when it comes to hip hop. And, you know, yeah. I, it makes me think about, you know, you know, Kawan know these brothers very well, you know, Duck City Music from out of West Virginia. You know, a lot of people wasn't really tapped in and listening much of what's going on in West Virginia. A lot of people didn't even know West Virginia had a hip hop scene. And then you had these two brothers, their emergence, and now look what they're doing. They're going from state to state and they're putting West Virginia on the map. Do you feel as though that you, as an artist from out of Milwaukee, could have that same kind of trajectory? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, like, uh, man, I'm I'm somebody for the for, for the culture, man. Like, I, I love I love hip hop. You know, like this is what I do right here. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm at I'm at the stage to where you know I'm, it's no longer like a belief for me. It's this is what I know I'm doing. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So once you know, it's a little bit different. But absolutely, man. Uh, you know, I love the city of Milwaukee, uh, and I definitely want to change it. And uh, you know show some and showcase some of the talents that we got here so i'm absolutely like you know as i continue like i said to grow and evolve i'm absolutely going to put uh you know the city of milwaukee in position where they can be able to be seen and see some of the dope talents that we got in uh wisconsin absolutely yeah, man. i think i think uh for my platform outside of rock king man all these other two artists that i know from milwaukee was my man um twine mac from mm -hmm. up there who's a hip-hop veteran up there and the legendary speech for rest of developments from Milwaukee. I'll oh wow! That. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a thin it's a thin crowd as far as the main brand. So it, this is this is like honestly for me to kind of tap into that market too easy because uh, I'm sure Rise out there getting a little buzz with the music that we putting out, and, and I'm sure some people start you know who who, who produced a project kind of thing and. and Right. And I, I love the advantage of having a show too in the, in the radio network. Cause it's not like I'm just not producing, man. I, I got an actual platform too, so I, mm -hmm. I want to hear some other spitters out there, and I want to hear what, what else Milwaukee has to offer, so we can put them on the map and, and connect them, connect those dots. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And that's one thing you know I can definitely you know say you know that I'm um, honored to be a part of your platform is the fact that you know listening to the Kawan J Media Network, you know you get a you get so many different artists from all different corners of the globe. It's like, yo, you get a chance to tap in to various different markets that a lot of people don't know about. Like we mentioned, you know, West Virginia. We also mentioned it now, Milwaukee. Then you also look that you got so many different pockets out here that has mm -hmm. good music and good talent that, you know, your platform brings to the forefront, man. So like with that being said, you know, going from being the the guy who puts it all together as far as you know putting people onto your show you know bringing people to your networking introducing you know new listeners to various you know artists and new art out there like how does it feel now transitioning from this the guy that was behind the scenes and also you know doing the on-air stuff to actually working on projects and working with these artists Man, it's, it's it's a part of like this is I guess it's kind of a part of the bigger plan because I always wanted to be involved with hip hop one way or another. You know, mm -hmm. like me and you got the similarities on the radio side with stretching Bobito was like our our template. You know, right, right. To put together a nice little radio show. Uh, K Slay, rest in peace, with with the drama drama hour. How he took his platform to a it's it's basically mainstream radio on Sirius XM still because they got you know sponsors and stuff so he took his platform to highlight the, the, the underground artists on his platform um so it was kind of like that man i'm just kind of following those trends with what those guys did and, and you know dj clue with the mixtapes and all that so i'm i'm kind of looking at it like i i'm doing the new age version of what a dj clue would have did instead mm -hmm. of the street tapes we put together eps to, to highlight these these dope mcs you know what i'm saying to give them a nice little body of work 
to build up their resume and, and, I, and I get my chops off too by, by doing the production so artists like, artists like Rakim and, and, and Lindor to trust me to provide the soundtrack to their lyrics man that, that means a lot that's a lot brother mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying and I don't take that lightly that's why I think I'm a little bit different too where I'm so involved with these projects I just don't give them the beats and let them do whatever they want to do with it and just like just put this you know just take care of me on the paperwork kind of thing like I, I really like being involved with these projects and, and treat myself like I'm an artist too you know along with these projects you know it's mm-hmm. kind of like we a group for this one project kind of thing you know what I mean and um it, it feels good man it really feels good to kind of see this mixtape show and this boom bap alumni umbrella kind of expand a little bit more now to where now we're actually making music I'm not just doing the promo mixtapes anymore like I used to do remember those bro when I would always just kind of get those unreleased records and put oh, them yeah. on the project together and release so so this is kind of like me improving that um, I always loved doing those type of projects but in the back of my mind I felt like I wasn't really doing anything I was just collecting music and, and packaging it up and putting it out there kind of thing so I wanted to do something more involved where I can help help create with the artists and create something exclusive as opposed to just getting unreleased music or you know records they didn't get really mixed and mastered and putting it out kind of thing I wanted to put out some professional work with them man and this is like probably the most fun I've had in a while uh, outside of doing the radio and stuff you know what I mean absolutely and Rod you know the one thing I'm seeing now the biggest trend that I'm enjoying myself especially as far as you know being a hip hop fan first you seeing a lot of you know artists and producers working with the same tandem on projects and i'm liking that because you you to me it, it, it kind of showcases more chemistry between that artist and producer even though yes i do enjoy the projects where you know you got multiple producers that have worked on a set project or whatever you know is particular at that moment but you have now where you look and you see you know like for example, you know, Nas and Hit Boy, they was working together. They did a series right. of projects. And then you look right. at Jay Z, you know, the thing he did with the 444 um, tape and all that stuff. So how does it feel for you to like work exclusively with one producer on a project? And I love it. I love it. And uh, to say this too, I haven't been thirsty, you know, to work with other producers, really being honest. Mm-hmm. Like uh, the chemistry here and I'm the type of person that looks at something if it's broke don't fix it and it's kind of funny because me and Kawan was talking we was kind of watching you know because you know with Kawan being from Queens and uh, Nas being one of the uh, you know MCs that influenced me on my journey mm-hmm. and uh, with him particular liking for Nas it was just kind of funny because we were talking about like you know the run that Nas and Hitboy had and uh, you know after we did one it was like, yo, like I'm, I'm, I'm not in no mood to stop. You get what I'm saying? What mm-hmm. we're doing, and, you know, like it, it's like we've been kind of feeding off of each other. You get what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. the chemistry is, uh, like I said, man, it's been absolutely beautiful. And uh, man, I don't like it's probably not going to be no stopping. Just being honest with you, because uh, man, we in a, we in a good groove right now, and uh, you know, like uh, I feel like we're both learning each other. Uh, me just learning him as far as a producer i feel like i'm learning me as an artist and man the chem- the chemistry there man you know what i'm saying so it's like i don't plan on stopping uh anytime soon anytime soon but it's been it's been it's been fabulous though to answer your question mm. and kawan you got anything you would like to add to that yeah no man it's it's i, I think that me and rod are honestly like you said we just really start to learn each other's ticks and patterns um mm-hmm. Uh, and so I kind of I'm starting to learn how he likes to start tracks off so I'll start building tracks because like I told you I do everything from scratch now so um, it's just been fun I think we've elevated both of us have elevated on the production side and he's elevated lyrically um, he, and um, I'm gonna send you the next project here after this call because that's already done mixing master I just want you to, I want you to listen to that one mm-hmm. and um Every, I think these next few projects that you got, the healing tape is literally going to be just the foundation of me and him. And the next things, the next steps we have, man, it's gonna, you're gonna see the growth and mm-hmm. between him and I. And you're gonna, it's gonna, I'm, it, it does feel like a Nas hit boy type of run where it's like, yeah, we can't, we're not gonna get, we're not gonna get tired of working with each other just because we don't want to lose that energy and that chemistry with each other. So mm-hmm. 
Rod literally would just throw an idea out there. Like, what if I did a project like this? And then within a week, I'm like, all right, I got these two beats. What do you think? Kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know what's there whenever, because I, I kept telling myself in between projects with him, I'm going to take a little break from making beats and kind of right, <laughs> clear my head a little bit and, uh, you know, listen to some other music to kind of get some inspiration. But he'll say one or two words, bro, and it'll, it'll spark something in me. And then I'm like, okay, I got it. I'm back on one. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just been a dope chemistry to work with a, with a brother like him, man, because he's so positive with everything. And, um, you know, and, and kind of like you said, when you have when you have one MC and one producer working together, it's, it's, it's so simple that you cut out so many other unnecessary things right. that hold you, hold the project back. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. why... Um, I haven't been so quick to jump on another compilation to put one together just because you got to deal with so many different personalities and, and get things in order. When you're just dealing with one person, it simplifies everything, man. It's just me and him. You know what I'm saying? All I got to do is send it off with Mix and Master and it's done. So I, I like that workflow way better than doing another compilation at this point. Absolutely. Right. And I, I will add on to that too. Like, uh, to me, that takes it back to, to me what I feel like the essence of the culture is just working with. You know, one producer really getting a body of work out here, you know, not going all over the place. And then, you know, it allows you to actually get to know that person and know, you know what I'm saying? Know, know the person who it is that you're building with. So, like, it, it becomes, it, it, I feel like it makes the music more special, honestly, versus you having a producer from here, a producer from there. So, uh, this is the way I like to do things. <laughs> you know, get mm -hmm. a producer. And, uh, you know, build a body of work rather than just having a bunch of producers all on, you know, a project. Not saying that anything is wrong with that, but this is my preference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just don't have the time, man. I don't, I hate sending beats out to people and then don't hear back for, for a week or uh, a month or two months. Or two, you know what I'm saying? So I like, I like this one. It's just me and him or me and whoever. And we can get it done. And I actually, you know, I, I kind of jacked the alchemist's uh, chemistry. Uh, he does the, his, 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 uh, uh his profile so that's what he does man if you, if you look at the alchemist's work body of work who's one of my favorite producers is he don't really do too many placements he do projects you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying um him and currency I, I like how they do their thing where they give one producer they give one artist and just just knock it out that way and that's that's kind of what i i kind of embodied what i was going to do and i got into this was i don't want to chase after placements i'd rather just create projects and do compilation projects with that artist and do just do EPs. I don't have to do full length albums. If I can do seven, eight track EPs, I'm happy with that. And just make it, just make them bang. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't, don't uh, put any cheesy tracks on there. Just put some bangers on there. What if you got people got to run it back? Because that's the Arrow being you from E, right? Absolutely. You have time to go through all those tracks, and you, you don't want to buy a 17 track album and only seven of them are dope. You know exactly. What I'm you want something that everything was a hitter. So that's that's my mindset. Is everything got to be a banger, man? I don't want to be too cute and I don't want to play around too much with the trying to be too artistic I was once somebody who said man just give me the bangers and let's go that's it yeah I remember I remember that back in the days when you know when you get a tape and, and you're listening to the you know the projects or whatever the case may be and the replay value it's like to me today a lot of the music that we have out here nowadays don't have very much replay value now you do have some joints that are bangers but when you listen to most of the music that's being put out there nowadays like it doesn't have that i gotta go back and listen to it again i really gotta go back and sit and listen through this project to really diagnose and digest what is being said like you don't have a lot of that and when you listen to the healing tape you know that's one another thing this is a perfect segue getting into it about the healing tape is you guys you know you coming with the message so with that being said my next question for the both of you is what made you construct the concept for the healing tape and wanted to put music with a message back out there yeah so like uh you know i was in, i was in a space where uh you know i felt like we was talking about that concept type of artist uh first and foremost and uh I was just in a space where I was like, you know, healing is important. And I think, you know, we was chopping it up, like how we want this to sound and what's the key elements, key elements as far as like that I'm trying to say, you know, for this project. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, it was healing because, you know, uh, you know, being being in this uh, world right here, you see, you see a lot of people to where they're dealing with certain traumas. And, you know, it's not necessarily no healing going on from those mm -hmm. things. So with you know certain things that i've been through in my life 
that uh, I could overcome those things. I knew I can overcome those things, but I had to just focus on, you know, just the healing aspect of those things. Like, you know, things, things such as loving yourself, dealing with things, you know, head on. <laughs> and, uh, yo, that's how the healing tape came about, man. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I think, um, he, like uh, I kind of mentioned earlier, you know, all this process has been healing for me, just doing this work because it takes my mind off a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then I think I too I was going I was in between jobs when I was working on this project with Ra, so that that distracted me a little bit. And um, for me, the healing part too is just making good music. You know, it doesn't have to. To me, the healing doesn't always have to be. It has to be a message in every song, but just when you listen to it, you feel a certain type of way. Mm -hmm. I think when you listen to this project, it puts you in a good mind space overall because we got we got a joint for you know for Rob talking about uplifting the ladies. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's one of my favorite records. That uplifter joint. Um, he talking sports. We talk about he doing it basically running down Michael Jordan's resume. You know what I'm saying? But it's, and it's a banger. Um, if you like television and you watch the Power series, you got a joint Rodney where he's kind of doing a uh, kind of a tribute to that. You know what I'm saying? And and just like joints like that, that just, just put you in a good space and, and they sound good. Um, and it's, like you said, you can run it back. You don't get tired of it. You know what I mean? And then we even released this project to have the clean version of the project too. Because if you're like me and you got shorties that ride with you everywhere in the car, <laughs> I, don't, I don't always want the kids to listen to all the curse words. You know what I'm saying? So. Right. I can play this for them and they can enjoy it. And then for my, for me personally, with this project, you know, my kids was, was around when I made, they was here, back here when I was making these beats for this project. So they, they recognize the instruments off the rip. So they, they face it light up when they hear the, the, the Rod's voice over it. And they're like, oh, he did a song over that. You know what I'm saying? So it's just kind of dope the full circle moment that I sat in the back room making these beats and, and you know, now it's released for the world to hear and we're getting this good feedback from it. And people really enjoy the project. Um, you know, people talking about they want the visuals that we're working on to get some visuals for this. So, you know, I, I got, definitely got to give my brother Rod his, his, his flowers, man, because he, he did his thing on this project. And um, it's good to see him get the response from people who may not have been familiar with him a few months ago. Um, so it's, it's dope to see that for me. That's, that's, that's my payoff, to see people respond to him and, and, and reach out to him and want to holler at him and they want to work with him now and then he kind of looking at me like yo you know this person i'm like nah, i don't know who that is it's not like a scammer to me right <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's uh it's, it's dope that, that he's getting that attention you know saying people really start to recognize it and, and you know some of the joints got put it on to the uh, to the, to the DJ pools like the, the beat junkies picked up a couple of the records and put nice. it on the big record pool so, so it's just dope to see that that happen man and be involved with that and have this positive energy and sit here and talk to you about it you know what I'm saying because a year ago we weren't even talking about making beats we were just talking about when, when's the next show going to be ready for the, for the radio station so right. it's just dope to see this evolution for me and you because I'm seeing what you're doing too man you're making beats and you're doing stuff and it's just, it's just dope to see everybody grow from all of this stuff man absolutely man and you know a question for the two of you you know um get into this one together and you can also answer it you know individually as well but with this being said you know the healing tape is out there now is making these rounds and people are giving you really good feedback and we're now entering into the second half of 2024 what can we expect next going forward oh wow a lot <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I, was I was just talking about, to Kawan about this today I, I actually got five projects coming out five five more projects coming out and uh you know Kawan's behind a lot of it mm -hmm. he's behind a lot of it. and uh you know we got the sequel to the Helen Tape which is called Rod Tapes which is going to be coming out uh you know the day that Tupac actually transitioned mm -hmm. uh September 13th so that's that's going to be a special one man getting the sequel to that tape and, uh, you know, other than that, me and Kawan has uh, another one that we ain't really told nobody yet, Kawan. So I ain't going to say too much, but we got, we got another one coming out in Halloween. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, man, in and, and, and 25, we come in, we come in right out right away. That's all I'm going to say, 2025, right back out. Yeah, yeah, we, got, we got some joints we, we got some joints. like you, you a hip hop fan so I think you definitely would appreciate this work that's about to come out and they all they all sound different too they all don't sound the same everything has a different sound to it in a good way mm -hmm. like I said no we're not really doing too much experimentation with the, with the beats but they all do sound sound different like um, like I said the raw tapes 
that's about to drop. That's in September. So, you know, we dropped the hidden tape on the day that Tupac was born. And so, and our tapes was dropping on the day that Tupac transitioned because me and Ra, we discussed how, how big a Pac fans we were. Mm-hmm. And, and so that was a nice tribute. Um, and then um, that's going to be more of a personalized project from his perspective. Uh, I think this, this healing tape one is just more of kind of like a generalization of kind of introducing the world to, uh, to me and Ra as a, as a collective and him just kind of showing off his MC skills a little bit. But this next project is going to be a little bit more personalized. Um, some more some more jewels, as always, in, that pra- in this project. Um, the Halloween joint that we planned in on, you going to definitely love that one. That's going to it's gonna be, it's sounding crazy so far. It's sounding crazy, man, um, in a good way. And then, um, like you said, in January, we got another another joint we're going to drop that we think is another special um, co- concept project that, that people really going to enjoy that one. And then my brother's going to do some work with my man, Kondu, too. We got that, he got a project with him we're going to drop um, later this year as well. So it's um, Rise of Workhorse, man. It's just dope to see him work, man, and, and do what he do. And then uh, for me, I may put out like another small compilation EP. I don't think I'm going to do a heel and tape type project just yet but I do have some some unreleased records I think I'll kind of batch together and release that like a little quick EP mm-hmm. um the end of the year the end of 2024 to celebrate the, the the fun year that I had on the production side this year it's, it's been a it's been a dope year for me man I, I, I have I was kind of sitting back and thinking about the work so far with three three project releases and going on four and five here within the first six and seven months of the year man that's that's all that's a lot of work you know so i don't want to call it content but it's a it's, it's a lot of work that's been released mm-hmm. that i think has been really really good quality work man and, and i could appreciate i appreciate you playing the record too man because i know you give the record spin on your show man so it's dope you know to hear it's, it's, it's like you know man it's weird to hear your, your work on radio you know what i'm saying it's hard <laughs> well, to get used to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I remember the first time as an artist when I heard one of my songs being played on another platform different than my own. I'm like, yo, I really can't believe that they're actually playing my joint. Like, <laughs> it's, it's like, I don't I don't care how many times you get a song played on the radio. You always going to listen yeah. to it like it's the first time you ever heard it. Yeah, yeah, and I try to play it cool for a while because I'm trying to trying to walk into do a lot of doors and uh-huh. you know, get them set up on the business side. So, but I'll, I'll be playing it, trying to play it cool with them. But I deep down inside, I'm like, I can't believe this is happening, man. <laughs> you know, like, you know, Tony Tony's touch played some records. Like, you know, that's nice. crazy to me, man. To to, to to get that that kind of play. So it's um, I'm blessed, man. I'm I'm really really blessed, brother. Oh, I can yeah. say that, man. And then rest in peace, Uncle Frankie, man. If it wasn't for him. Uh, instilling those jewels in me at a young age and even with his transition man he's still giving back so I definitely thank you uncle man he, he's the reason that this is all happening had I not gone to that funeral and got his NPC I probably wouldn't even be doing beats for it again absolutely man. Man. hey man Beautiful. so you know with that being said you know I want to ask you Kwan, how close are we to that Nas interview <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's still my goal, you know, Rod. That's been, that's been my goal from day one. Is I, I got to get a Nas in here, so I got. I guess the, the traditional way of being a media personality isn't going to do it. So I guess I'm gonna have to do it through the music. I'm gonna have to produce something that catches his ear, right? Right. And uh, maybe maybe that'll set up a meeting where I could bring a microphone and we can talk. And I can like, by the way, I do radio too, kind of thing, man. Because that's still that's still my my, my big whale. That's my white whale. I got to get that Nas in me. And once I do that, I'm shutting down the mixtape show. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the ultimate mic drop moment for you right there. That's it. But, but you know what's crazy is through all through all of that by chasing down the Nas interview, man. I got to interview like Apollo Brown. I got mm-hmm. to interview Goody Mob, and um, I got to interview Cocaine from the West Coast, and mm-hmm. and you know, oh man, who else? Are some big uh, see, see knowledge of Diggable Planet. Um, Sweet tea, uh, man. A lot of legends, you know. What I'm saying a lot of legends have have great do it all from Lords of the Underground. Um, Billy Dan's an MOP. Like mm-hmm. I got to chop it up with some really dope MCs. Dreads a black street. Like these names just, just keep popping up in my head. Oh, you I, can't... I got the top chop it. Up. My fault. What you was gonna say? My bad. I was gonna say Father MC, mm-hmm. um, Yo Yo. Uh, damn, who else? See, I know there's been a lot of names. I was gonna say you can't forget the legendary MC Shin. 
Yeah, MC Shan was yeah. wild on me, man. I had, to, <laughs> I had to try to keep him real. That's a tough one to reel in, but we kept it under control. So, yeah, like, right. me chasing these smiles and you, man, I've, I've gotten to, to talk to a lot of the dope legends and the Capadonna, a lot of dope mm. legends in the game. And um, that's a crazy resume, too, right? Like, yeah. that's something that I don't entirely either because a lot of people don't get that opportunity. And um, DJ Cool. You yeah. know what I'm saying? DJ Cool gave me props where he was like, you need to be on that some radio. I was like, what? That's so, dope. Um, I, the mixtape show ain't gonna stop, man. It's just, you know, it's just hard. It's, we just figured out ways to make it better. You know what I'm saying? You, you're you going through the same thing, too. I know you're trying to figure out ways to, to kind yeah. of you know, widen that scope a little bit. So that's, that's all I've been doing, man. I have, I've been cutting back on interviews a lot just because I just don't want to do the basic interviews anymore unless it's somebody I really, really know and I'm cool with. Mm-hmm. But I, I wanna I wanna put that mixtape show in a different space too, man. I'm ready for it to expand that a little bit. So I'm I'm still working on that. I love I love doing it. I love I miss the travel of hitting the road doing the show. So maybe we'll have to do that again to kind of respark that that energy again, man. But mm-hmm. yeah, the Nas interview's coming soon. I just don't know when. <laughs> looking forward to it. Definitely, <laughs> man. Looking forward to it, man. And when it comes down to it, I know you 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 regard me as a, a a cornerstone when it comes to this, you know, this online media and, you know, br- digital broadcasting. But you also are one of them, fill- uh, should I say, pillars and foundational members of this whole thing we got going on here as well, man. Because, you know, people out there that's listening right now, you know, if you just listen to that whole resume that you just rattled off, with all of those different names mm-hmm. that you have had come across your platform and then you still got people mm-hmm. out there that don't take our platform serious maybe they need to really mm-hmm. reconsider it because like when it boils down to it, if you got people that are established and have legendary icon status coming over here to chopping up with real individuals maybe you can learn something from that mm-hmm. maybe you can learn to humble yourself and come over here and rock with it as well because mm-hmm. you got a lot of people that use these platforms as launching pads for their career and look where they at right now you know what i'm saying so like that's definitely dope man and i want to say thank you for everything that you've done also for this platform as well because when i had people that was dropping this show left and right and getting kicked off of various networks and stuff like that you still held me down even when I had, you know, a whole lot of in- uncertainty going on with my platform as well. So I definitely say thank you to you for that one and salute you for that one right there as well, my brother. Nah, you good, man. You know your family, brother. You ain't never got to tell me why you can't do something. Just be like, hey, man, I'll be back in six months. Like, I got you when you're ready. You know? <laughs> but, right, um, Yeah, man, it's just crazy. It's just, it's just it's to the artists out there, like me and he put, it's, it's a lot of other platforms like ours too, man. And we do put in that work. And, it was crazy is the legends or the, the golden era greats for the legends they treat us with way more respect than the cats that's up and coming mm-hmm. and which is wild to me you know what i'm saying like i've had i've had legends inbox me and check in on me see how i was doing and you know hey man whenever i got this new project i'm gonna come to you kind of thing you know what i'm saying whereas I, I, I reach out to indie artists. I'm like, yo, I like your music, man. Let's 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 talk about it. And they they, they either want to try to charge me, or <laughs> they book it and they don't show up, kind of thing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, what are we doing here? So, you know, you you kind of live, you kind of you kind of live and learn who to talk to, who not to talk to, kind of thing. And then they they usually come back around when they see that resume, like that resume I spit out. Whenever they see a couple of those interviews drop then all of a sudden they want to come back and they want to join the fun mm-hmm. but it's a little bit too late at that point so oh yeah absolutely just keep doing us brother we're gonna, we're gonna keep doing us man and we're we gonna find our way to where we need to be you know what i mean that's all it is fellas we got, i definitely we got people like we got people like rob man who, 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 who we can we we use them as you know a cornerstone that these are the type of artists that we, we need to look out to so as long as i got people like you and rob in, in my corner man I don't, I don't need those phonies that's all it is man and fellas, I do want to say thank you for taking the time out once again to come and join me here on this show. Definitely do appreciate it, man. This has been a dope conversation. Probably the best one that I've had being, you know, doing this thing again, you know, with interviewing people here in 2024. I think this is only the third time I've had an interview this yeah. this year. So, you know, it's definitely dope to be able to catch up with some really cool brothers, especially, you know, you, Kwan, and getting to meet you, Ra, and all that good stuff, man, and just talking hip-hop, you know, because when it boils down to it, there's a lot of foolishness that's going on right now in the world, but just to be able to sit there and for, you know, the last hour, just 
having a conversation and just forgetting about all the ills that's going on right now in society it's a breath of fresh air and definitely something that was well needed man so i thank you fellas once again for coming here so before we get ready to wrap things up do you have anything y'all want to add rock what you got rock man just just be on the lookout for this work that we got coming that's all i will leave people with you know we got the rock tapes coming out in uh September. Uh, we got something coming out in October too for Halloween. So just be on the lookout, man. We putting some real great stuff out for hip hop. If you're a fan of the culture, the sport of hip hop, you are gonna like what we got doing for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. And I, I can say the nonstop radio show is on my top five list of exclusives, bro. So whenever I got anything that's ready to go, I'm sending it to your way first before it's even ready to go. You know what I mean? Mm, no <laughs> doubt. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> Hey, hey, Ra, I got a question for you. Okay. Ra, I got a question for you. For the people out there that want to get in contact with you, that want to, you know, listen to more of your music, or they want to reach out to bring you onto their show, how can they make that possible? Yeah, you could you could reach out to me, uh, you know, to listen to my music, first and foremost, you can uh, reach out to me by going on Bandcamp, and then, you know, I'm pretty much rocking with a seven on everything, so if you reach out to me on Instagram, you know, uh, Rock King R A R A pretty much underscore K seven N G. Uh on Facebook it's uh it's just R A K I N G. So it's with an I on Facebook. But uh yeah, yeah, just pretty much through social media, uh, uh through email, through my brother DJ Kawan. <laughs> Contacted Kawan, that's another person to reach out uh to get in touch with me as well. And uh yeah, yeah, right now everything is on Bandcamp, but we are gonna put things on streaming and uh do timing. But uh right now you can find everything that we doing that I'm doing on Bandcamp. Yeah, Bandcamp and then the project's also on DJ Kawanmusic.com. Like I said, it's not on streams. We'll probably get that at some point, but it's definitely not in a hurry to get there. So it'll be it'll be in house first. <laughs> no doubt. Well, fellas, once again I say thank you. You know, we're gonna go ahead and get into some of this music from off of the hill and tape ladies and gentlemen i got rock king and dj kawan rocking out with us here in the building keep it locked and stay tuned it's your boy emilio Wackball, and we'll be back with much more right after this want to be heard on the non-stop radio show send us your submissions in mp3 format at let's network musically 212 at gmail.com this is non-stop radio Yo, DJ Kawan, host of the mixtape show and DJ Kawan Radio. And right now, you tuned into Nonstop Radio Show with my dog, Emilio Eggball, the hottest show on this side of the net. DJ Kwan Radio, where hip hop lives. Drop it.